Welcome to an episode of Judgment Free Stress Cooking. <laughs> so, um, I can laugh at myself, you know. Um, I was kind of thinking before I made this, some of the stuff I would say when I was talking to you guys today. But, um, if you stress cook, then this is the episode for you. Let's get Welcome into it. Welcome to Modern Homestead Alaska. We are Aaron and Jessica Milnes. We are building a modern homestead outside of Wasilla, Alaska with the help of three of our children. Our second son, Caleb, our daughter, Cody Ann, and the youngest of our family, Wyatt, along with our three dogs, Tipper and Daisy, and the newest addition, Roberto. We're gonna start off with jam bars. Um, these, let me turn you, let me get you. Okay, even if I lose a little bit of head. Doo, doo, doo. Hi guys. Okay, so jam bars. My friend Becky shared these. I had sent them to her because she loves bar cookies. And I have to agree. We love cookies at our house too. Cody's a huge cookie maker. However, um, cookies take a lot more effort, you know, because they're individual. But these is like a big bar that I'm going to cook. I'm going to double my recipe. We have people visiting. Wyatt, for those of you that don't know, I just put recorded and somehow the videos are coming out either together or right around the same time. Broke um, a vertebrae in his back. And so we've had people coming by to visit him and it, you know, it takes a village to get through even just the mental aspect of this right now. So, with people coming into the house, um, I want to be able to, you know, kind of have some snacks and stuff that I can say, oh, here, have a cookie while you visit, whatever. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna make these quick jam cookies, and they are literally so simple. They are butter, sugar, vanilla, flour, salt, and then jam of your choice. So, I'm doubling mine, so I need four cups of flour. To that, I need, so I did four cups of flour, which means I need two cups of butter. So these are a buttery shortbread cookie bar. I found a while ago on Pinterest, made it, and my family just absolutely adores these um, because they are so, so simple. So to kind of make the crumble, I cut it one direction, then the other. Okay, so now I have four chunks, and then I just kind of diced it up. So now I have little squares of butter. So two. So well, I'm finishing up the butter. Let's so talk a little bit about like stress cooking. And I was curious, what do you make in your house when things are just hard and stressful? For us, there's so many people and that sort of thing that we kind of make different stuff I guess depending on the stress it's not me that's injured so baking is my like release my way of uh, caring for my family if you will um, so yeah so I'm curious drop that in the comment section what do you make when you are stressed out or what was your favorite Thing, just any story that kind of pops to mind. I love to read about that. So for each recipe, it's a half of a cup of sugar. So we need one cup of sugar. And then quarter teaspoon salt. And then the jam goes on top. So I'm gonna bring this together. It'll be crumbly and dry. So when, while this goes for a minute, when we got Wyatt fitted yesterday, we had him in the truck and he needed a prescription for pain. Um, so while I was in the pharmacy, Aaron went into the grocery store and just decided he would grab some stuff to help me out. He was hungry. It, you know, we didn't even communicate about it. And 
And then when I got done at the pharmacy, I thought, you know what? I don't even have anything thought out. I don't know what's going on. Everyone's hungry. I'm gonna grab a couple of things. I know what I have at the house and then make the family something to eat because in the middle of all of it, everyone needs to still eat. So it was so funny that we had both gone into the same grocery store. We're there together and both of us bought ground beef and Velveeta cheese. I mean, his idea of what he was gonna make, we'll make tonight, which is, um, he was kind of craving just nachos where you just put the meat and melt the cheap, gross American cheese on it and make nachos. And then I got it to make like the worst macaroni and cheese, not my normal, like grate all the cheeses and do all the things baked macaroni but like a, just a cheap Velveeta macaroni and cheese. And I was doing hamburgers um, that we fried kind of on some, some onion, whatever. And the goal of all of it is for me to make several things or things that go far, um, but are also like really truly like comfort food items um, because right now I just, it, when everyone's craving cookies or whatever, it's because it's a little stressful. Anyway, what do you do was my question. So now this is done, it's crumbly and ready. It It is super dry, but I've had it just set up every time and not had a problem. Now I like to put most of it in the bottom and a little on the top. down this cookie bar. So it calls for three quarters of a cup of jam and in the photos it is raspberry and I do have some raspberry jam. However, we figured out mixing jams on this was amazing. So this is my homemade apricot. So we're gonna start with that. And I just do big dollops. So we're gonna kinda swirl two jams together. And then the other jam, I have a strawberry rhubarb here. They're both very tart, um, rhubarb and apricot, but I've done apricot raspberry. We've done plum jelly on these. We've done, of course, raspberry jam, but I, rhubarb is in season right now. These are last year's rhubarb, but, so you just kind of go like this. it together but believe it or not rhubarb apricot strawberry and then if you did like half and half then people can kind of decide but my family will love it like this there you go and then crumble the cookie topping Double check the time. 25 to 30 minutes. So going in. It's actually Wyatt behind me. <laughs> you can hear. Um, wave. Hello. You got it? Mm -hmm gonna eat ice cream while I make brownies and cookies. Was I even kidding around here? Okay, so this is a super old brownie recipe. 
It's the old original like Hershey's one and we adore it, but it is not like brownies at all. It is like fudge. So again with the doubling, White's gonna have friends pop over to see him, people in and out. So if I can just have a plate of cookie bars, some brownies, and I'm going to make everyone's favorite cookie, I decided after this, because, you know, simply not enough. And then we are gonna just have cheap old nachos for dinner, um, so that's fun. So each recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of Hershey's cocoa, which is, if I double it, a cup and a half. Call it good. All right, so you mix together the cocoa um, stir cocoa, baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda, and the vegetable oil together, and then we're gonna put boiling water. So baking soda is a half of a teaspoon, which is one And then two thirds of a cup of vegetable oil per each. And we're gonna use grapeseed oil today, which means a cup and a third. Okay, so you whisk together that. Leave this liquid measuring cup out. State bird came to visit. We even got all the screens on the house, but the mosquitoes are so crazy right now because we've had so much water, so much rain. Okay, so three quarters of a cup of Hershey's cocoa, a half of a teaspoon of baking soda, two thirds of a cup of vegetable oil, and now we're gonna bring a half a cup, which is a cup total for two, of boiling water. This was just spitting behind you a second ago. So. Okay. So we whisk that. And look at what it did. Did you see that? It turned into this crazy Not wild. Okay. So now to that, we are going to add two cups of sugar. I'm not quite sure why I washed everything down between videos. I mean, I do know I was talking to Caleb and Wyatt and Life. So two cups of sugar, which is one cup per recipe. And two eggs. Just four. Now see like that came, the oil almost separated out. It's bizarre. Quarter teaspoon salt, just two pinches and then a teaspoon of vanilla. Oh, this vanilla smells crazy. Pinch to grow on. Okay, get that whisked, and then when we add the flour, we paddle it in with a, okay, one and a third cup of flour per one. Oh, that's our cookie bars. I'll show this to you in just a second. So, with any form of like rubbery spatula, wooden spoon, whatever, you just mix it together until it comes together. Because if you whipped a bunch of air in there, it's gonna be like cake. And if you like a cake brownie, hey, okay, greased. 13 by 9 pan, this is way bigger than that. I just have some, this giant Pyrex here. I don't know what size it is, but 
it's a little, it's bigger, um, but not quite double, but no big deal. So this is just a little lard. Going down in there, grease it. And then look at that. Doesn't that look like, it looks like hot fudge. Three fifty, and I think this one goes. Da, da, da. Just shut off my clock. Thirty-five to forty minutes. These are a crumbly cookie bar. They are a little bit jiggly, um, but you can see that some of the flour and stuff got absorbed into the um, jam and the jelly, but we have like some crackling and stuff. So these need to cool completely before. I did put some parchment in the bottom. So what I may do, okay, that's perfect. It's just, I'm coming along this edge here in case there is any jam on the sides. There, perfect. It unstuck perfectly, but I do need to let this cool completely before we try to cut it. <laughs> you ever get through a moment in life where all of a sudden you're like, what am I doing? Okay, so here's what I'm doing. No bake cookies. Um, these are a family favorite. I loved these as a child. Um, they are Aaron's absolute favorite. I don't know if they're Cody's favorite or not, but I know that the boys absolutely love them. They are so simple, full of oatmeal. We use tons of peanut butter. So even though there's some sugar in here, there's milk and butter and oats and um, peanut butter. So what's not to love? Okay, so I like to use a heavy body bottom pan on these. I'm reading this recipe to see if it's the same as mine so that I can link it to you. And it does look good enough. Um, that way I can throw this in the description box and not have to do so much work. Okay. This one's going to be fine. Let's get into it. No bake cookies. Again, we're doubling. <laughs> so start each one with a half of a cup of butter. All of it goes into the pan. How simple is this? If you've never made these, each one gets a cup of creamy peanut butter. We get our peanut butter from Azure and the Great Big Tubs. So there's two cups of peanut butter. Then two cups of sugar. So I have four here. And then quarter of a cup of cocoa. So I have a half of a cup of cocoa. Fun note, we are out of milk here at the house. So we're gonna do a half of a cup per of milk. So I'm gonna do a half of canned milk and then half water. There we go. And then turn it on low, start heating it up. And then when it's finished, we'll add the vanilla. I'll bring you right back. while it melts. So here it's come together, it's melted. We're waiting for it to boil. And then I've covered the counter over here with some parchment. We're just waiting on this to hit a boil. And when it does, we're gonna let it boil for one minute and we're going to add the vanilla then. So see that it's starting to boil. We're gonna let it go for one minute and then I'm gonna teach you a trick because I use quick, I don't use quick cook oats. I use the old fashioned or rolled oats. And so if you put them in and you let them cook in here for just one additional minute, they set up the same way. But if you don't, they kind of get runny because the oats don't absorb enough of the liquid quick enough. 
thing going, I'm gonna add two teaspoons. Now we're not at like a big, we're not overheating this or we would burn the chocolate. Oh, that smells so good. Okay. And in with the old fashioned oats. If this was quick cook oats, you would just take it off the fire and stop. But we're gonna mix this in and let it cook for about a minute. Now using, you can just use a spoon, but I'm gonna use this cookie scoop. Okay, let's see. We have these cooling. Cookie bars are cooling. We're getting there. Uh, brownies were pulled out, and then right when it just starts to crack, see that? That's when I pull it out. Cookies are cooling. Let's not burn ourselves. There we go. Cookies are cooling. All but the pan is washed. And I'm gonna bring you back when everything's cooled down. I was gonna do the floors, but I'm gonna take a nap. I'm gonna take a nap and then I'll be back. All right, everyone's already trying to dig in. Is it set up a little bit? Still a little bit warm. Let's cut a little bar. Show you what it looks like. That is cute. They're so good. Mm. Mm. I like that. It's really like the strawberry rhubarb. Okay, brownies. Like I said, <laughs> let me know what you do in the comment section. So, puffed up a little. Let's get a middle brownie. Wait, did you want brownie? Mm -hmm. Or did you want a cookie bar? No bake. No bake? Okay, perfect. All right, look at that. These are so... They are so good. Perfect. Okay, <clears throat> if you can see the no bakes, they're all glossy, but not completely cool. But when you pick them up, they hold together. Put two of these on plate, have white taste test. Look at those. All right, buddy, tell us. Mm. Mm. Tastes like a no bake? Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, if you enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button. When you ring the bell, you'll get notification. Thumbs up and comments all help our channel to grow. I am so grateful that each and every one of you joined us today. I hope you enjoyed. Again, let me know what do you do when you're stressed. We'll talk to you soon.